This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is due to popular demand, Jesus Christ, an updated Dragoonity deck profile for the August 2017 post Code of the Duelist, post-Link era, post-Link summoning implementation, yada 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 bullshit. Uh, basically deck profile for this time frame of Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, basically I've had a lot of people that because they know that I usually am always messing around with some sort of Dragoonity Spice, they want me to actually put out a deck profile and put out some combos and things like that. Well, the unfortunate fact is, is that right now Dragoonity does not lend itself very well to Link Summoning. There's not a lot for the deck to abuse in the way of the Link mechanic. Now, in the set after Circuit Break, we should be getting the Wind Generic Link 2, basically the Wind version of Mrs. Radiant and Master Boy. So then we could probably start, you know, looking into a little bit more Link-based nonsense. And there is definitely some combos that can be implemented using Gustos and Destrudo that come out in the Circuit Break set. But as of right now, post Code of the Duelist, there's really no reason to try and go down any sort of Link summoning path with this deck. There's only a reason to just play up to the deck's current strengths. And what those strengths are is making level 8 synchros as efficiently as possible under the new rule set. So that is what this deck is optimized for essentially is that you're going to basically be taking a step back and you're going to be approaching this deck in a different way than we have been for the past couple of years. Essentially this deck kind of goes back to its roots of how it functioned back in 2011 where you would just like normal summon ducks and go up into a level 8 synchro. But because we do have access to the Atom Darkness Metal combos, you can do multiple level 8 synchros in a turn, but those are usually going to be involving Cyframe Lord Omegas because Omega lends itself very well to this deck's strengths and the restrictions that Link Summoning provide. But anyway, enough rambling out of the way, let's get into the deck list. It is a 40 card deck list and it starts out with three copies of Dragoon Ducks, just standard stuff. Uh, one copy of Blackwing Zephyros the Elite because of the Link mechanic uh, and the Link restrictions on your Escher deck zone. The Ravine Zephyros combo doesn't exist anymore because you can't make Vajrayana and then make uh, another Vajrayana off of Ravine Zephyros. So just playing one for the combo sequence off of Mistleton and your other like better combos is all that this thing is really used for nowadays. But two copies of Mist Valley Baby Rock. This card actually becomes really important because Gaederg becomes a lot more important in these lists. And Baby Rock being you know a card that you can add and discard to get free tuner access uh, during your combo sequencing is what you want to be messing with. Uh, but carrying on, those were all the winged beasts. We have three copies of Dragoonity Phalanx as the tuners, and we have one copy of Dragoonity Ackles as well. Ackles is still kind of important uh, because you need to be able to use the little bit of accessibility that it gives you into uh, just getting it into your grave off of your Gator combos and then equipping it to a Vajrayana, and basically that's how you're going to be trying to out Masterpiece. Uh, because you'll be able to out Masterpiece Diagram with Vajrayana with an Ackles on it, because Vajrayana will boost itself to 38 by sending Ackles, and then Ackles will pop Diagram, which is protecting the Masterpiece from its destruction once per turn. So, there is that to consider. That's the only reason it's in the deck, though. <laughs> Literally the only reason. If Masterpiece goes away, then so does that card. But, carrying on, three copies of Dragoony Armor Mistleton. Mistleton is definitely, like, the most important card in the deck now. We've lost access to Instant Fusion as an extender, we've lost access to Ravine Zephyros as a one card play, or one card starter play essentially, alongside Ravine uh, with Zephyros. Uh, so now everything revolves around Mistleton because you need another level 6 dragon that doesn't take up your extra deck slot, and that is Mistleton. Like, it's so important to the fact that I was testing a Hieratic Hybrid, even though those are very naturally prone to bricking, because of the fact that like Tefnuit and Sue and shit were basically, in theory, extra copies of Mistleton in terms of being level 6 dragons that don't take up your extra deck slot. But unfortunately, those that idea just didn't work out that well in practice as well as it did in theory. But Mistleton's very important, and you definitely should be maxing out on it. But obviously, the Darkness Metal, you definitely be playing that card. And then we're playing uh, four hand traps. We're playing three copies of Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, and then the one of Max C. Basically, uh, these cards just sort of help you be able to go second, even though this deck is definitely a deck you're going to be trying to go first with every single time. Uh, it's so hard to win with this deck going second. Uh, it becomes easier to win with the Hieratic versions because you have Tef, Nuit, Sue, and that sort of stuff. Uh, but that that those builds are very unstable in terms of bricky nature and things like that. But this deck is actually very unique in the fact that you get to add back hand traps with like things like Ptolemy, uh, which is definitely something that still exists. 
Uh, and also you have things like Omega that can go to the grave and shuffle cards like your hand traps back into your deck. Uh, there's a bunch of little niche factors that still exist within this deck, even though it is hindered very heavily by the new rule set. But that was 18 monsters carrying on into the spells. There are two Dragon Ravines and one copy of Oracle of Zephyra for the set rotation target. I just don't have a Gateway of Chaos on me. If I were going to go and play at a tournament, I would buy a Gateway of Chaos, but I haven't had a chance to buy one because I haven't gone to any locals in a little while uh, in, with the intent to buy cards. Uh, but Oracle Zephyr is just fine because, I mean, like, who's going to be playing Zephyrs after the only format change as well? Because that literally, that deck literally died with the new rule set. But anyway, carrying on, we've got three copies of Terraforming. We've got three copies of Set Rotation uh, for the obvious access into Ravine and setting Oracle Zephyr on your opponent's side of the field so that they can't activate it because they don't have a Zephyr card in their deck, hopefully. And then uh, two copies of Cards of Consonants. Uh, because we have the Ackles in the deck, this is a lot easier to resolve. Uh, this becomes a lot better post circuit break when we get Destrudo because Destrudo is a 1000 attack level 7 dragon tuner, which means that you can cards of consonants that away as well. Uh, and that's like really good because its effect activates from grave as well. But as of right now, just playing two of it. Uh, right now, we're just, we're like I said, we're trying to play to the strengths of the deck that it currently has, which is not really link summoning based, but more of just trying to just maintain solid advantage with its own mechanics that it's been using for years. But two copies of Twin Twister just to try and make your going second game plan a little bit easier. And then for one of us, we got Soul Charge, Raigeki, and Book of Moon. Now, Raigeki and Book of Moon are obviously so that I can have some form of spell outs to Masterpiece in some capacity. Uh, Soul Charge is obviously a broken combo card. This is like, this is the only other card outside of Mistleton that allows you to have like broken, like turn one combos, like reliably. Uh, the only other way that, like, that you could play this deck uh, to like try and combo off like very reliably would be like playing three Gofu and then playing three Zephyros because if you summon Gofu and you open up two extra deck slots with like a Decode Talker or making Link Spider into Ib, then Ravine Zephyros works. But otherwise, uh, you have to use like Soul Charge essentially. Like that that list might be better, but I haven't tested it enough, and I I found that I didn't like the fact that I was drawing so many Gofus even though you can discard them with Gator to add Garudas. But like it was a really wonky list, and so I just I fell back onto this in testing uh, for more stability reasons. But that was all the spells for the traps. We've got six. We've got three copies of Dimensional Barrier in the main, two copies of Solemn Strike, and then one copy of Imperial Order. Uh, essentially, I just wanted all my traps to be really powerful and really like game breaking. I wanted to be able to, at the worst case scenario, right? I wanted to be able to summon a Stardust and set like one or two of these and be fine, or I wanted to be able to just like summon a crystal wing and set some of these and be fine like if i have order i'm obviously going to probably make crystal wing uh things of that nature but if i'm comboing up with like a mistleton play or a soul charge play which soul charge plays are great in this deck because soul charge plays are literally like three omegas and uh and crystal wing and darkness metal but regularly ravine phalanx mistleton is two omegas darkness metal and crystal wing or stardust depending on what you want to choose i've already done a video on that though it should be on my channel lurking somewhere if i can find it i'll link it in the description or I'll just make it again if I, for some reason, deleted it. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> that's the main deck. For the extra deck, uh, it's actually not as tight as it used to be because we have really limited accessibility into certain things. So, like, it's really strange. I actually had to, like, I actually had a couple of flex spots in this extra deck that I haven't had in, like, years. But anyway, uh, three Vajrayana, one Coral Dragon, just because it's not really that amazing, but it does come up from time to time. Uh, and then Gaederg, obviously. The Coral Dragon, the second Coral... The Coral Dragon might be swapped for, like, a second Gaederg, because sometimes... Uh, it does come up that you have to make one from extra deck in certain combos, but it's not that important uh, until, like, like it's probably more important once we get to Strudo, but as of right now, one Gator is fine. But for level 8s, so we have one Stardust, we have three Cypher and Lord Omega. This is literally, like, the way you're trying to play this deck now. is literally just, like, any big combo that you have access to where you are going to be summoning, like, a Tom, Darkness Metal, and all that, the very minimum you're going to be able to do is make two Omegas. Ravine Flanks Mistleton makes two Omegas, and then Darkness Metal, and then either a third Omega or a Crystal Wing, depending on your choice. Uh, but, like, almost every combo makes two to three Omegas if you're not just normal summoning Ducks and going into a level 8 Synchro. Uh, so, like, this is super important. This is how we play to this deck's strengths. We make level 8 Synchros to the best of our ability, and that's what we do. Uh, and Omega is just, like, the best level 8 Synchro in the game. Uh, Scrap Dragon, uh, this card actually comes up a lot more than it used to, simply because, like, again, this deck's strength is making a level 8 Synchro. And mid-combo, you're able to make this instead of like Omega, and you're able to pop itself, get it out of the monster zone, and then Darkness Metal it back uh, and pop other cards, and it vacates your extra monster zone, 
and so that's actually kind of important. And then one copy of Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. Uh, this card is like probably the best card in the extra deck outside of Omega. Um, like this is definitely the card I feel safest when it's like out and about because this card is good against Masterpiece. It's good against a bunch of different things. Uh, and then it's like a floater as well because of this deck's natural like capability of just being able to use Darkness Metal to summon this back from Grave if for some reason it goes there. So like that's actually just all really cool uh, for like what it allows you to do. But so for the Xyzes, there's only three. There's a Tome, there's Ptolemy, and there's Gaia Dragon, the Thunder Charger, which has not been in my lists for a long time, but it is really important now because what you have to do is if you make Ptolemy to add back Darkness Metal you have to be able to put Gaia Dragon on top of it to banish the Gaia Dragon to summon the Darkness Metal so that your extra deck monster zone is open again for you to do things like make Omegas uh, and or do things like make Crystal Wings and shit like that. Uh, but Atom is always obvious like why you play that card. You play that card to summon Darkness Metal. Uh, and then the last card in the extra deck is actually one Link Monster. I do play one Link Monster in this deck. It is a Decode Talker. Uh, this, you could be playing Gofus in the main, honestly. Uh, there are probably a couple of cards that you could cut out of the main to put a Decode Talker in. Uh, but the thing is, like, if you put Decode Talker in and you're playing Gofus, you have to make room for, like, two Link Spiders in the extra deck as well. Uh, and Decode Talker, like, just, I don't know if it's worth the space, three in the main and three in the extra for it. Uh, especially considering it turns all your three card combos into four card combos when your three card combos were already decent enough as it is, because they do go into multiple Omegas, that is basically just, like, the same advantage yield. Uh, but sometimes this does come up, strangely enough, uh, where like if you make a couple of Omegas turn one, and then you uh, you put a Crystal Wing in your extra deck monster zone, and then during your next turn you have Darkness Metal Crystal Wing out still. Uh, a lot of times I find myself like summoning Ducks Phalanx back, uh, and doing things like linking with Decode, uh, linking with like uh, Ducks Phalanx and Crystal Wing into Decode Talker, and then using Darkness Metal to bring the Crystal Wing back, <laughs> um, just to like. Just to like be able to use Ducks and Phalanx, because if Crystal Wing is in the extra monster zone, you can't use Ducks and Phalanx and your gameplay really stops. Uh, but if you are able to make Deco Talker and then use Darkness Metal to just bring back the Crystal Wing immediately, like it gives you an extra zone, uh, it allows you to actually continue a game plan in some form of capacity. Like, it's really interesting. Uh, it's like it comes up every now and then for like really niche things like that. But anyway, that has been it for this deck profile. Like I said, like this deck changes potentially a lot when we get circuit break because Destrudo is a really good card for support for this deck. I don't know if it's going to implement like good combos. I've been testing a few combos that have been going into like link summoning basis post circuit break uh, that end up like making firewall dragons and stuff. But my problem with those is that they end up making like they end up making the firewall dragons and using their effects uh, during the same turn. So like there's not really any worth to it as like disruption for your opponent, but I mean, hey, I guess it's bodies that I guess you could like justify those being as good. I don't know. It, there's definitely a lot more testing that has to go into it before I make a decision on Destrudo Dragoonies for post circuit break. But it is definitely something that I'm looking into because like Destrudo is a fantastic card. I wish we had that card like in 2012. Like that card, <laughs> that card helps so much with like the game plan of how this deck sort of plays and how things function. But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Links, as always, are in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to support the channel directly and help more content, more quality content, more things in general come out to the channel, then definitely go check out the Patreon page linked in the description, as I've already said. It supports the channel a ton, gets you access into some rewards, as well as access into a monthly giveaway for 10 packs of the newest set. I might end up upping that to more than 10 packs. I might end up upping it to like a box or something. Uh, that might end up being something that I just do. I haven't decided yet, need to work out the logistics of it, but other than that, <laughs> basically, there's just things that you could look forward to over on the Patreon if you want to support the channel directly. Even something as little as a dollar a month is a fantastic way to show your support and all that sort of nonsense. Special thank you to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, and Yuki Phoenix, and everybody else that's currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You make a lot of difference in my ability to make content and my ability to put time towards making content and doing research for content and things like that so just know that you have my greatest thanks and my eternal gratitude from the bottom of my heart but other than that as i've already said thanks for watching let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below like this video if you enjoyed the content subscribe if you already haven't it helps out a ton helps the channel grow and all that sort of nonsense but other than that enough rambling aside take care guys i will see you in the next video actually if you made it this far give me a hashtag dragoonities in the comments down below just to let me know that you do watch all the way to the end so i can know 
who actually goes the complete distance. But as I've already said, take care, guys. I'll see you in the next video.